Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do was just get rid of that error that we saw last time. And it seems like it's probably just because we're loading up an old farming gatherable group, but the gatherables from farming don't actually exist in this scene anymore. If we if we look down here, it's the gather main room debris, the gatherable group called main room debris that wants to load. Um, but if we check our database, that that group does exist there. We we've, we've made it main room debris, but it's loading up this. Um, front yard thing and that's throwing an error. So I think what I want to do is just uh, use the same template we built here for now um, just because that one shouldn't be broken and uh, that should just get rid of the error so then we can work on other things for now because I'm not actually ready to like you know thoroughly design the inside of the house and the clutter in there yet. So let's just do a little test and see if that fixed the error or not. Yeah. That seems good. We're not getting an error, and there's a rock in my house now, which I should be able to break. Yep. Okay, so now the fun part. We need a whole bunch of items and a whole bunch of producers. <laughs> so let's go over to the art scene, and I'll kind of explain what I've got going on here. So the corals at the front are, these are templates that are uh, labeled as icons and drop icons. The coral at the back, there's it's sort of broken into a couple of rows. So the the row, the smaller one is as big as it can get when it's a home farmed coral. Um, and then the bigger row is what you can get if if it's a, like a wild coral, grown wild, because the spaces are bigger there. Um, and then at the back here we have what can happen when it dies, and um, we'll also have bleaching events, which look like this. But that'll be uh, a script in the client that does that. Um, there's going to be a little bit of tedious work involved here on several fronts, one of which being that I haven't actually made the collision, the static models for all of these, so I'm going to need a bunch of fast forward video to do that, or I'll just have to cut that out of the video. It's probably pretty boring to watch me just make a bunch of colliders. And then we need a seed to plant it, and for that I have these tiny little fragments. Our coral fragments are going to be the seeds because there's this thing that uh, scientists will do. They'll take a coral and they'll cut it into little pieces and then they'll grow those little pieces into new corals to put back out on the reef. So that's that's sort of a thing that that happens in real life and I like it. So we're going to do that here. Okay, I guess I'm just going to go at it here. Let's try to make some coral items. Again, you can't see it, but I'm totally looking at my database, my not um, not the internal database, but my spreadsheet. all the items. That was a lot. Now, um, you, you'll notice that as we've done before when we set up the other items, that was only the drop type, um, drop template and the icon. The other art is all going to be set up in the producer states. T 
table. So we'll go there now. This was the one where I took a blank table um, because I, I wanted these separate, uh, some, some separate columns. So the ID is going to be the name of the producer again over, over here off screen where you can't see, I have this huge list of data that I already did, um, that I already thought about. Uh, so I'm just copying and pasting from that list. That's where the IDs are coming from. Um, in my case, for the type of game that I'm making, I felt that it was best to figure out all the art and the naming and how that would work before I started building any of this, because I, I don't want to have to redo um, this, the, the tables. So the fragments are seeds, um, and the mature ones are, we're ignoring those two, those are a, an, another kind of seed, a bigger seed, basically. And then these chairs are also grown from the same seed, but that's not what we want. What we want is these, B1 through B6. I I think I was just going to do build states and not a place state because it's not like a plant where I'm not going to let you start growing till it's watered or something. Instead, it'll start growing right away, but if it bleaches or something like that, then it'll stop. So these are basically build one, build two, build three, build four, build five, build six. The, the tame one is only going to need states one to three. But when we get down to doing the wild version of it, then um, I'm going to have to add some extra columns, <laughs> even more columns into this producer states things, because ours, uh, if we go over to the build states, you can see that they, uh, they only go up to three. For most games, three, three states is adequate, uh, but I really wanted to be able to um, do something a bit more elaborate for this game. <clears throat> but just to get it working, since the tame coral only needs three, uh, we'll just we'll start with that. So we are going to ignore the play states. We're going to leave that all empty. And these are all you can see that they're labeled client. We're going to go building state one client, and then we're going to want to look for building state two client, then building. And we actually, we will have a dead one and stuff like that too, but again, we don't, don't need that. I think actually I'll leave it and delete these two rows, just so nothing goes wrong. And I think we can just, we'll just try to get one working. <laughs> we'll start there, start with one working coral. So we've got the art states. This only defines the look of it, not its behavior. The actual behavior is going to be defined in the, um, producers. We haven't deleted um, all of the old producers, so we got a bunch of stuff here. So we give it the same ID we had here, but we now we put that there. It's going to need a unique storage ID. Source item, that's what we built in the, um, the items table. It only takes one fragment. Ooh, valid producer base type. So that we just made, I think I just called it a fragment spot for now. This is why you write these things down. You know, I have that one written in my database. Stuff that doesn't fit well into my database I have in my notepad, but keep track of stuff because you're going to, you're going to need it in other tables. Um, we're going to just make the build seconds really low. One collect doesn't rebuild. So here we're going to just use that same, that's producer states ID, so that's, it wants to talk to the, uh, that other table, so that needs to be identical, um, it can expire, we'll shut this off for now, I need to think about what the settings should be for this, so valid place tools hand, that's fine, valid destroy tool types, should probably be hammer, valid collect, is actually going to be chisel. 
This is to as a reminder to the player of how they can collect. Use a chisel to collect coral. Placement preview works very similarly to how the um, placeable. Probably that one is what we want for the basic hologram, so it looks like a little seedling piece when you look at it. Um, we will change place effects and stuff later. I'm just going to leave those alone for now. So it'll be funny. They'll be like plant leaves when we harvest these coral. Uh, remove effects. Drop and collect. Drop IDs. Okay, so this little coral, I wanted that to drop the mature coral, right? So we need to go get the ID for the mature one mature version of the same coral and we're gonna have to build it into a drop ID so I'm just gonna put collect at the end of this and I'll call this a producer harvest in my notes we're gonna get one we're gonna get it 100% of the time Okay, so this drop ID is what I'm going to need back over there in the um, producers table. And I think we want it um, to drop experience as well. So these are for if you want it to drop things when it's destroyed in other states. We're not going to worry about that yet. Just delete these. We don't need any buffs or anything on this. We do need to at least make the producer states for these first few things because um, a thing needs, not a thing, a producer needs a static in order to be interacted with. So I think this is the one we're working on here. These three are the three we're dealing with at the moment. Um, so we need some kind of collision for those and they're too deep, like we can't have a super detailed tree thing, right? So, so we need to go and pick something sort of appropriate in shape. Um, that's hopefully not too high poly or that it's, um, collision isn't too high poly. I often use the capsule for these, but let me take a look and see if the sphere has been optimized or not yet. I don't think it has. No. What I just did there was I went into a collision view. So I'm going to copy these three objects and then I'm going to paste them just out here and de-instance these and I'm going to abandon template and I'm going to change the names on them so that they reflect what the what this new template is going to be. I'm gonna check inside them see if there's anything unnecessary. It doesn't seem like it. We want these to uh, we, we can delete the art out of these because we're going to replace this. So if we look at the capsule, we're just going to pull one out into this uh, folder I just made. And we turn up here into um, player collision view. You'll actually see that the capsule's been optimized. So it actually has fewer faces when it's, um, when you're just looking at the glider and you're not dealing with the, um, so I'll go back to the default view. So I don't really like using a cube when it's something like a plant because then it feels weird, right? You are encountering invisible corners. The collider needs to be where the player is likely to click, but it will stop the player from passing through it. So if you make the collider too big, it will probably annoy the player. So try to at least make sure the center of mass for this thing um, makes sense for the coral even if you can't cover every little branch right and do that for any coral that need any object that needs it i'm sure you're not making a coral game so yeah hopefully when the player clicks sort of in the center -ish of these they'll they'll manage to interact with them the noise your player makes when they collide with something is determined by the material of the thing so even if I'm going to make something invisible, I generally try to put the same material on um, the collider that's on the original object. 
So we're going to just paste that coral material on. And then when it's a collider, I normally turn the material like red, as red as I can make it. This one won't turn very red just because of the type of the material, but it's fine. Just to help me um, know if that is accidentally showing. I mean, in this case, it would be very obvious if my collider was showing, but it's not always obvious. So turning it red just helps me identify my mistakes. Okay, and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go to these and we're going to force off collision on all of them. I, I'm probably actually going to force camera collision off on all of the art uh, for these as well, but it's not a huge deal right now. Okay, so that, that should be all we need to do for those. Uh, now we just need to make them templates. We need to add those to the states because we remember we previously added, um, you know, just the um, client art for these states. So here we have building state one static, building state two static, building state three static. If we want to test and see if this producer works, which maybe it will, um, we need another table. <laughs> Getting useless yet? We need our starting items. And this time we might actually want um, to start putting stuff in the inventory rather than just uh, rather than just into the hotbar because um, it just gets crowded. The hotbar only fits so many things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add these here instead of writing hotbar. We're gonna write inventory. So. We're just going to insert a row below. If I use the name instead of the ID, that won't work. The name of that item. So I need the name of the fragment in order to plant this thing. I'm also going to just up some of these amounts um, so that I can, when we're testing, it would be nicer to have more, the ability to have more plots. So we'll and its inventory will do it just in slot one. We can now hop over to the main scene and see what we've forgotten. Remember, if we add something to our inventory, we need to hit F1 to make it actually show up. We need to reset. And I do see it there. So we, we have a little coral guy. That's pretty good. It grew right up to the end. <laughs> Something went wrong, so we've got some funny settings in there. Oh, it's there, but the last... Oh, we didn't put in a, a ready state. We should, instead of putting build 3, or um, it in build 3, we should have put it in the ready state, because um, this coral only grows to there. Uh, so it's there, it's just invisible. So because it's invisible, there's no static, and we can't collect it. Okay, so that's that's no big deal. We can fix it. I think I'm going to have to show you how to fix that tomorrow, though, because we have to... I don't think we can clear the field for that. I have to export this template to fix it externally. So um, that'll take a little more time, and it's just very late at night. So I'm going to end this video here, um, and I will see you in the next one.